everybody welcome back to talk with naya so let's get into it we have to talk about chloe bailey now chloe bailey's album numbers are out okay her album in pieces debuted at 119 on billboards 200 and sold 10k units now fans felt that chloe deserved better than this and some were saying who cares where it charted it was an amazing project now how many of you bought her album or listened to the album multiple times i know we spoke about her before and a lot of you said you had a, a ton of favorite songs on the album so it seemed like a good chunk of y'all listened to it. I know I listened to it. Some said that it felt rushed. Some even said that the marketing wasn't great, which I I don't know. I felt like I knew about the album, you know? Did you guys feel like you knew about the album before it was gonna drop? Let me know. And then some said that basically they wanted to blame Beyonce on, I guess, her low album sales. Now, I don't know how I feel about that. What do y'all think? Do y'all think it's fair to blame Beyonce for how Chloe's album turned out, you know, her first week sales and everything like that? I mean, I definitely understand she's under Beyonce, but that doesn't mean that she's going to be this big, huge artist like we all want. I wish that was the result, but it doesn't guarantee it. Now, Chloe did share that the album was about letting go and trusting herself. And she said, I've enjoyed every moment of it and I love everyone who listened to it. Tour starts tomorrow in Chicago and I'm so ready to perform these songs for y'all, okay? Now, there were a ton of people who were on TikTok with their opinions of the situation, listen to- I think something very interesting is happening right now. And all kind of just really focuses around Chloe Bailey. I have a theory as to why there's so much discourse around Chloe recently, right? And I want y'all to hear me out. One thing that I realized that a lot of people don't recognize that Chloe and Halle, at their core and at their beginning, is an alternative R&B group. So the way that they go about making music, the way that they go about presenting themselves, whether it be um, in a live performance, it, in any fashion of being in the music industry, it's from an alternative standpoint. And I say alternative in a sense of not saying like weird, but it's not packaged in your typical cookie cutter way of being packaged. Because on Twitter, TikTok, whatever it may be, there's been a lot of talk about Chloe's album, Chloe's personality, the way that she presents, um, her performances, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And I'm sitting here and I listen to Coco Jones's album. And I'm like, Coco and Chloe sing about the exact same thing. The only difference is Coco is presented more polished, more, I want to say straightforward or more like girl next door. Whereas Chloe is more in your face, more braggadocious, more quirky about it, right? Also, we have to remember who her mentor is. But with that being said, it makes me see that people don't like different. They don't like people that are different. They don't like people that express themselves differently. They don't like people that don't make sense. But if you really sit back and listen to Chloe's album, it's so good. It's so reminiscent of the alternative R&B that her and her sister made in their music, which y'all didn't listen to, but it was so good. And it's easier to recognize and understand why Chloe moves the way that she does. It makes perfect sense. Her voice is so distinct. Her voice is so unique. Her voice is not even just her voice, but the way that she delivers her music. It's so out of place and out of pocket. And if you step back and actually just recognize it for being that, it's so much easier to appreciate it because it's not just your typical R&B sound. It's not just your typical R&B music. I think people want to put her in that typical R&B box and make it quote unquote presentable in a sense, but that's just not who she is. At least not from what I see. And I this I I'm not gonna lie to you. I listened to this album front to back. It's honestly one of my favorite projects recently. It's so good. It's so good. <laughs> it's so good. I cannot let it go. And I want people to just hop off that girl back. And just recognize that she's just, you know, this, th you need space for different creatives. I think something very interesting is happening right now. And all kind of just really focuses around Chloe Bailey. Let me tell y'all what I think happened with Chloe. I 
think Chloe missed her window of opportunity. Don't get me wrong. I think she could get another one. But her single, uh, Lord Have Mercy, whatever it was called, was hot in 2021. Correct? That was like two years ago almost she should have put the album out right after that because she had a buzz you know people were paying attention to her she was performing on award shows she had folks attention and the song was pretty good but no you wait almost two years later to drop an album and people like all right well shoot you ain't gonna give us a whole full thing all right she should have put her album out when she had the pop and single like they should have been ready. They were not ready. They missed their moment of opportunity. And I know a lot of y'all are saying y'all can't connect with it. I also feel like in that, like, she had a popular song. It gained some buzz and some steam. It was on the radio. It was really, you know, out there. She should have followed up with an album full of bangers. Because everything I've heard from her after that has just been okay. Like, even the song she got with Chris Brown is just okay. So, I don't know. I, I definitely agree. Chloe, watch this video. She's very talented. We know that. I think people wanted to hear from her back then. And now it's like, all right, you out here with music, but it's not really that good. The music is just okay. So as talented as she is, the music is not popping. And she had a window. She should have took taken it back then. I do wish her success. I don't, you know, I know a lot of people think that she goes over and above with like her image and all of that. But I really think she had an opportunity and she missed it. I think that's all there is to see here. Hopefully she can monopolize on a, another opportunity in the future. But she need the music. The music got to be popping for her to make it work. So let me know what you guys think about Chloe's album and how you feel it performs. There's people who think that, you know, it's just her first project. Let's see what she does on her second project and how she continues to grow. And also that the album sales could grow over time, of course, because it's just the first week. But let me know. People also were in the comments saying you guys dragged other new artists when their albums performed really low, but somehow people are kind of coddling Chloe or whatever. But let me know how you guys feel. Now let's move on. Doja Cat is playing with us, y'all. She's playing with us again. We spoke yesterday about how she said she was doing a full rap album and how she's done with pop. And now she's saying the whole album is no longer rap, it's rock slash spoken word, and the album title is not Hellmouth anymore. Then she was saying she quits music, so Doja Cat. As a fan, honestly, I'm, I'm tired, I'm drained, I'm done. You know, so I think she's just trolling everybody. And it sucks because some of those people who are listening to her are her real fans who actually give a dang about what she plans on doing with her next album so i'm just gonna tune out okay i'm not gonna pay attention to anything else that she says about her album until it is here all right let me know how y'all feel about that lastly can we talk about jason lee okay jason lee praising Nicki minaj i never thought i'd see the day he says that Nicki minaj paved the way for other female rappers listen to this because when Nicki came in the game there were not active female rappers rapping Okay, Nicki Minaj didn't only just take her spot, but she ran that bitch for years. And she paved the way for Cardi B and other girls to have a spot where they are. So some people were in the comments saying that he wants Nicki Minaj to go on his show. He must want her to come on the show. That's why he's saying something nice about her or that he must be arguing with Cardi B because, you know, Cardi B was the first guest on his show and he kept saying how they're real friends and real life and everything like that. So... What do y'all think about this clip with Jason Lee and what he's saying about Nicki Minaj? Let me know. And that is all I have for today. I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.